All right, so we got the entire Horus Heresy timeline story explained by an Australian. Let's get to video. Get out. The Horus Heresy is the ultimate thing I point to when I explain why Warhammer 40k isn't just another fictional setting, but its own beast entirely. It's okay. literally a prequel series that has more lore than Star Wars, Halo, and Dune combined. For real? And another thing I was actually about to say before you said that. Why hasn't this been a movie yet? Why hasn't this been like a like a like a series on Netflix? Like, bro, this should have been the series in the first place. Wowzers. 54 full-length novels featuring hundreds of fleshed out characters, thousands of supporting characters, dozens of interwoven plot lines on a galactic scale, and it's a bloody prequel. However, I bet 99.9% .9 of you haven't read the Horus Heresy series. I haven't. I'm only just reaching the end of it now, and I've been working at it for over a year, and this is my job to know Warhammer lore. So I'll stop showing you about St. Goody's punching on with Angron or the lion fighting Conrad Kurz or Kurz cock and ball torturing Vulcan, you wouldn't know the other 99% of other stuff that happens between then or what order the events of the heresy take place. So it's timeline time, baby. All right, here we go. Love timelines. Before true, we get started, true. you guys asked and now I've answered. As the 2025 magical calendar is going live as of right now. That's He's talking why about I his merch? The calendar before it became out of date. Here's the twist. This isn't a booby calendar or a nude cosplay calendar. I do like boobs. I haven't become gay or anything. However, I also love Warhammer more. <laughs> so I commissioned 12 amazing Warhammer 40k artworks depicting some of the most awesome moments from the lore, scenes from the Horus Heresy, scenes that involve the Tau, Eldar, Chaos, Necrons, and Custodians, and so on. All right, that looks cool. I can't lie to you. That looks, that looks tight. Involved. So no matter who you play or who you like, they're represented. That looks Currently tight. It's a hybrid of Australian and American, which means it has special symbols for a day like Australia Day, Super Bowl, Halloween, and my birthday, and I threw in Chinese New Year in there as well, because why not? I am very proud of this calendar, as it comes in three styles, either A4 Standard Style, A3 Standard Style, okay. or Legendary Edition. Which features an extra artwork. Yo, can some, yo, back cover I'm gonna be honest with you. Y'all being fake right now, bro. Somebody needs to see your website when you uh, like buy like Warhammer, like you know, like figurines and stuff like that. Bro, for real, I'm really trying to buy some. Week, today till next Monday. So if you want to get it, then real you life, bro. Don't, bro. Don't, don't gatekeep. Don't gatekeep. So enjoy them. You gotta get this calendar. This will also act as a test. A lot of people think magical fans are porn addicted simps. However, if this calendar sells better than the nudie cosplay calendar, not only does it prove that you guys are chads, not virgins, but I'll also release the nude Sanguinius cosplay photo shoot I've been sitting on for a while. <laughs> Just because we aren't photo shoot. Gay. Link is below. Get the best goddamn calendar of 2020. All right, here we go. Now. Let's go. Today we'll go over the timeline of the Horus Heresy. This definitely won't be like a deep dive video, but will give you a coherent direction of the plot and where everyone was at at various times. Okay. Now let's get into it. Let's get into it. Shout out to all the support over the past Heresy few days. Off with Horus, who under the immense pressure from being War Master, combined with his own ego and insecurities, getting stabbed with a chaos knife on the moon of Davin. He had been okay. manipulated to travel to Davin by Erebus, the architect of the Heresy and a secret servant of Chaos. The knife not only begun killing Horus due to its unique properties, but also inflamed his ego and exploited his weaknesses. As he lay dying, his space marine sons took him to a Chaos Lodge of healing in an act of desperation. In that lodge, Horus was further exposed to Chaos and was fed misleading visions that pushed him into pledging allegiance to Chaos Dang. and to topple his father's empire and become the new ruler of mankind. Horus immediately began planning his heresy upon his awakening and revival, knowing he needed powerful allies and the element of support. <laughs> Who knew that? <laughs> Who knew that out of a whole son, like, sorry, out of, what, 20 sons, and of course, they're all bad apples. Well, not all of them, but most of them are bad apples. Who knew that this would be the, 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 the rotten apple right here? <laughs> this man right here is the rotten apple. I'm talking about the, the rotten, rotten apple. I'm talking about every time you send him to school, bro, he's getting a call. Bro, he's getting a phone call home, bro. He did something every single day. He got lunch attention every single day, bro. Yeah, bro, just lock this menace up. Bro. He managed to convince the leader of the Mechanicum, Fabricator General Kelborg Hal, who was the person in charge of supplying most of the Imperium's weapons and armor, to join him via offering him a number of special STCs, technological blueprints, as well as more independence for Mars. Bro, he offered that man HDMI cords and you joined up? Bro, that man, bro, bro, that man gave you a bunch of Ethernet cords and some Cheetos and you joined up? Are you serious, my brother? That's crazy! Kelborg Hal accepted his offer as he harbored a lot of resentment towards the Emperor for more or less forcing Mars into an agreement. With Mars secured, Horus turned his attentions towards turning his brothers to his side. 
Horus was extremely level-headed, charismatic and insightful. He knew exactly which brothers would join him and which ones would not. Lorgar was already a servant of Chaos by this point. Conrad and Angron were insane and would relish the chance to be assholes. Mortarion resented the Emperor, so he was an easy pick, whilst Perturabo was emotionally manipulated into joining Horus after he burned down his own homeworld. Wow. Fulgur was being corrupted by a Chaos Sword, so Horus waited until the corruption had seeped in before approaching him and then converting Fulgur <laughs> to his cause. Alpharus approached Horus and offered his loyalty after receiving visions of the future by the alien Cabal, and Magnus actually wasn't originally a part of the plan. He... I'm sorry to keep pausing it, but bro, it didn't even take that much for them to even get on his side. They were already looking... So you telling me that, that the Emperor had a bunch of scared sons... Because they were scared to, you know, to go get to uh, to go against like their daddy or whatever. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. When your dad's the emperor and everything that I've heard about him as a, as a warhammer new booty, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll be scared too. That, bro, it didn't really take that much. Yeah, cool. Horus was charismatic, but bro, they were already planning to do it in the first place. They just didn't have the balls to do it. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, like I said before, when you have a bunch of sons that are a bunch of red apples, uh, sorry, uh, bad apples, there's always that, uh, that, that rotten apple that infects everybody else. Crazy. Which is why Horus manipulated the space walls into attacking Prospero. He wished for both legions to wipe each other out. Wow. The Mechanicum began diverting most of its resources to the traitor legions in secret, whilst also developing new weapons and ammo that would. Y'all see the Salamander? Armor. Horus also identified a few of the loyalist legions that would be challenging to overcome, such as the Dark Angels, so he sent them to the edge of the galaxy using his authority as War Master, whilst others, such as the White Scars, were isolated in cut off star systems. This was all during a pre heresy preparation. Calculated. Where Horus wished to set up the traitors as well as he could. The phase ended with the Isfan atrocity, where most traitor legions purged their loyalist elements by sending them onto a planet and then virus bombing it. Most wow. of the loyalists survived, however, due to the heroics of a man called Sol Tarvitz, and they fought to the bitter end. During this purge, a loyalist ship escaped and news of Horus's betrayal reached the Imperium. At a similar time, Fulgrim tried to convert Ferris to the traitor's cause and was rejected, causing <laughs> Fulgrim to attack Ferris and then flee. Within a short <laughs> while, most of the Imperium became aware of Horus's treachery, with Rogel Dawn sending the Salamanders, Ravenguard, and Iron Hands to destroy Horus, with the Night Lords, Alpha Legion, Wordbearers, and Iron Warriors supposed to back them up. You, you heard what he said? You heard what he said? They, they sent the goats, the Salamanders, to, to go destroy Horus! This resulted in the Isfun Dropside Massacre, where the three Loyalist Legions were spit-roasted by the eight Traitor Legions and lost around 95% of their strength, with no! Ferris Manus himself dying and Vulcan being captured. No! As Chaos had been stirring up the warp to help Horus, a lot of messages weren't getting through. Hence, the Ultramarines, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, White Scars, and Space Wolves didn't really know what was going on. The Word Bearers were sent to destroy the Ultramarines, taking them by surprise as they were mustering on Chaos. Oh! The Ultramarines survived and defeated the Word Bearers before then taking on both the Word Bearers and World Eaters during the Shadow Crusade, a crusade in which the two traitor legions were trying to cause as much destruction as possible to trigger the Ruin Storm, a massive warp storm that would isolate Terra, scatter the Loyalists, and give the traitors a huge advantage. The Night Lords were sent to attack the Dark Angels and slow them down as much as possible to prevent the line from entering the war and fucking all the traitors to death. Perturabo and Fulgrim went on a quest to try to find the Angel Exterminatus, a mythical Eldar weapon that could supposedly end the war early by forcing an Imperial surrender. Mortarion was sent to try to convert the Khan to the cause of the traitors, Magnus sat on the sidelines, licking his wounds, and considering which side to join whilst his shattered self begun to die, Alpharus activated numerous confusing plans and unleashed his massive legion against the Loyalists. Now, the first part of the heresy was extremely good for the traitors. They almost wiped out three Loyalist legions, the oh, other no. legions were scattered and taken by surprise, but here is where the Loyalists to strike back. The Ultramarines fight off the Shadow Crusade, with the Word Bearers and World Eaters withdrawing from Ultramar as Angron ascends to become- And this is why we love the Ultramarines, bro. They, bro, they really came through and helped us out, bro. Bro, shout out to the Ultramarines, bro. Demon Prince. The Lion crushes the Night Lord Legion, killing many of them and fracturing- And shout out to the Lion, the too. rejects Mortarion fights him off, and then fights through an Alpha Legion blockade before declaring himself loyal. Sangunis overcomes the Chaos Trap set for him by Horus and crushes a combined Slaneshi and Cornite Demonic Legion. Fulgrim turns on Perturabo and nearly kills him, ascending to become a Demon Prince in the process as Perturabo escapes and declares eternal hatred for the Emperor's children. 
The Alpha Legion try and fail to destroy the Space Wolves after Prospero, losing a chunk of their legion. They also attack the Sol system and lose a fuck ton more marines, as well as Alpharis getting killed by Dawn. This Ooh. causes Omega to take over and withdraw the Alpha Legion from the Heresy. However, whilst his brothers may be struggling, Horus and his legion were a powerhouse. He drew Fulgrim and Mortarium to him and managed to take over Molech, giving him access to the Molech warp portal the Emperor once used and gaining immense power from doing so. He also captured or destroyed world after world, creating a clean path to Terra. The only spanner in this plan was when the Space Wolves went rogue and directly attacked the Sons of Horus in a near suicidal charge resulting in Lehman stabbing Horus with the Emperor's Spear, but losing most of the Space Wolves in the process. The wounded Horus that- Shout out to you, bro. Shout hey, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, that that was very, um, I don't think I can say, you know, the S word, you know, on, on YouTube or whatever. But that was very brave of you, bro. Very brave of you, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you, I would never do that. I, bro, I gotta shoot him with a, with a sniper or something, but good job, bro. That is a coma leaving the traders leaderless and scattered, allowing the loyalists more time to regroup. After the Shadow Crusade, Gilliman discovers a beacon in Ultrama called the Pharos Device, which acted as a mini Astronomicon. It guided the Blood Angels and the Dark Angels to Ultrama. However, as they were so cut off, they thought the Imperium had fallen, so they made Imperium Secundus and made Sanguinis the new Emperor. However, oh. as soon as they discovered that the Imperium still stood, they immediately dissolved their empire and beelined to Terra. However, Chaos had put many obstacles in their path, including literal system spanning Chaos Walls. The three Primarchs fought through each obstacle and even fought Mardale, the Chaos Jesus. However, they managed to beat Mardale and destroy Davin, which was the source of the Ruined Storm's power, causing it to dissipate and give the Loyalists a path to Terra, a big no-no for the traders. The Lion and Gilliman distracted the various trader blockade fleets, which allowed Sanguinis to slip through and reach Terra. At a similar time, the White Scars also reached Terra after battling the traders and hit and run campaigns for oh. years. They did so via accessing the portal to the webway, which bypassed the Ruined Storm. Uh -oh. There was also a number of other important- So is this where like the Silver War kind of happens a little bit? Like the Brother Silver War happens? subplots, such as Corvus's action against the traitors post Isfun and how he ended up saving Lehman and the Space Wolves, as well as Vulcan's escape from Kurs and his quest to reach Terra to build the Talisman of Seven Hammers. But as I said, we don't have 100 hours to make this video. So True. the current disposition of the Heresy was the White Scars, Imperial Fists and Blood Angels defending Terra, the Lion destroying various traitor homeworlds to cut off their supplies and okay. from the rear, the Raven Guard and Space Wolves licking their wounds on the Raven Guard's homeworld after narrowly escaping death, Gilliman finding an alternative route to Terra. This is bro this is calculation this is the bro this is calculation at its finest bro bro the lion cut up the supply so he won't keep going back for ammo bro bro this is bro this is straight calculation bro this is i mean obviously like we're kind of like in like a little civil war right now bro i'm kind of liking this bro like wow hey y'all know who, whose side i'm on what bro whatever the sound man side uh is on bro i'm on their side bro with a massive army that would crush the traders if he was able to catch them between himself and terrorist defenses vulcan was also on terror but keeping his presence a secret so basically all loyalist primarchs were either on terror or they were on their way to terror by corvus yeah we're sliding the traders disposition was a lot worse horus was in a coma fulgrim was jerking off in the webway perturabo was fighting a pointless war on talan losing a lot of warriors in the process conrad had abandoned the heresy via getting jettisoned into space by sanguine oh yeah they're all the going out bad ditched magnus was still trying oh, yeah. to find his marbles angron was going on random killing sprees leaving only lorga and mortarian actually accessible look at all these Lorga bombs with malagurst the equerry of horus to bring the traders together perty was forced to abandon talon and instead seek out and bring angron to heal lorga went to go find fulgrim and bring him to heal magnus finally got his shit together and declared himself for the traders whilst mortarian also began heading to the muster point on all uh -huh. Horus was finally restored back to consciousness when Malaga sacrificed his own life to bring him back, and although Lorgar tried to usurp Horus and take control, Horus beat the shit out of him and re-established himself as the chosen War Master of Chaos. In the meantime, Mortarion got trapped in the warp and turbo-blasted by Nurgleite Aids, turning himself into a demon prince and his death guard into the Plague Marines. Oh, oh. The traders were now ready and assaulted Terra directly. Conrad wasn't present, however, a few dozen thousands of Night Lords were. Likewise, Lorgar wasn't present, but thousands of Wordbearers were. The Alpha Legion were almost entirely absent. Five full trader legions, with elements from three others, crashed upon the Sol system, uh -oh. defended by three loyalist legions. The Custodian Guard had been reduced by about 90% due to the war in the webway, so they weren't able to be the decisive weapon both sides expected them to be. The siege was brutal for both sides, and it contained a shitload of awesome lore. But to keep things short and sweet, Sanguinius banishes Angron by ripping out his butcher's nails, Jagadai sacrifices himself to banish Mortarion, but actually technically survives, Fulgrim is humiliated by Dawn and loses interest in the siege, Perturabo is 
is sick of his asshole demon brothers and ditches the siege. Horus loses most of his sanity, so he stops directly commanding. The Night Lord elements are crushed when their commander is killed by the first captain of the Blood Angels, and Magnus is banished by Vulcan. Wow. However, despite their successes, the Loyalists are on the back foot as Terra is flooded with demonic warp energy and there are barely any defenders left. The Ultra Marines are extremely close to Terra, however, the Loyalists defending Terra don't know it. So when Horus lowers the shields on the Vengeful Spirit to try and end the siege in a final epic showdown, the Emperor, Sangunius, Rogal, Valdor, and other Loyalists teleport on board. Rogal is trapped in a Cornite pocket dimension for centuries. Valdor fights Abaddon, Sangunius fights and is killed by Horus, and then the Emperor begins turning into a Chaos God. However, he realizes that it's a pretty shit idea when he speaks to Alanis Person, his oldest friend, thus he rejects his own ascension, freeing Rogal from his prison, who then in turn saves Valdor. The Emperor faces Horus, and the two have an epic duel. Yeah. Horus is more powerful, but the Emperor is way more crafty. Whoa, how is he more pow- Oh, oh, because of the chaos stuff, right? Wait, hold up, hold up. I need to hear every single detail. Give me one second. I, I gotta go back real quick, y'all. Hold up. My bad. Hold up. I, I, need, I need to know. Person his oldest friend, thus he rejects his own ascension, freeing Rogal from his prison, who then in turn saves Valdor. The Emperor faces Horus, and the two have an epic duel. Yeah, come on, Emperor! Horus is more powerful, but the Emperor is way more crafty. Come on! The Emperor does receive help from various sources, which finally allows him to slay Horus, ending the heresy. With Horus dead, the Chaos Gods withdraw, and the Traitor Legions lose their edge as the Ultramarines arrive. They flee, and they're hunted like the dogs they are. Yeah! And killed. The Emperor is carried to the Golden Throne by Rogal and placed upon it, beginning his eternal vigilance, whilst the Dark Angels and Space Wolves arrive on Terra to find it devastated and their father entombed. A lot of the Horus heresy was overlapping. For example, while the Shadow Crusade was going on, the White Scars were trapped in Chondax and the Horus was attacking Molech. So it's hard to have like a step by step what was happening, but I hope this gives you a great idea of where each Primarch was at each stage of the heresy and how they all ended up where they needed to go. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see- Bro, first of all, shout out to Major Kill, man. Bro, imagine like, bro, you're the Emperor, bro. Like you have to like take out like one of your sons, bro. You know, cause he was just a rotten apple. Bro, imagine you, bro, you just on this tomb forever, bro. You just sitting there. You got one of the uh, Dragon Ball Z little uh, scouter things connected to your eye. Bro, every time you need to feel an itch, you can't itch it because, like, you know, you, you can't move. You skin and bones. You haven't had a, you haven't had a, you, bro, you haven't had a, a good meal in 20 centuries. Your teeth are still white. That's good. You got a thousand extension cords connected to your brain. Bro, they over there sacrificing a thousand bodies just for you to live. Like, bro, that, that that's, bro. Oh, man. Like, I, I feel bad for the Emperor. But listen, but at the same time, though, like, you know, he had to do what he had to do, man. That man, Horace, bro, he was causing a ruckus. So it's either, you know, you, you, you know, you take him out. But at the same time, you know, he do good damage to you. And all of a sudden, you know. You, you you know you just a carrot just right in here or you know or you let everything slide so other than that man comment down below what if you you know what do you guys think about this video man i definitely enjoyed this man uh i did like how uh major kill broke this down um in such a quick way you know um obviously we all know man west hammer man he would have broke everything down this video would have been 20 hours long bro <laughs> hey but that's why we love him though that's what bro shout out to west hammer shout out to major kill um you know and as a warhammer new booty man listen man, i take anything that i can get I'm still learning. Uh, it's, it's crazy how I reacted to a gaming cinematic trailer of Warhammer last year. And here we are. It's crazy, man. Other than that, man, um, what else I got? I got some Astrobot coming for you guys tomorrow. I think I got an uh, Astrobot reaction coming for you guys. More Warhammer, of course, man. You guys love it. I'm going to keep giving it to you. Um, like I said, Warhammer coming through. And if you do, in a few more days, we, um, we got some Stalker reactions, Stalker 2 reactions. Uh, to the story and stuff like that and to the gameplay just see how it is and then uh, I'm probably most likely gonna get the game and then play it myself off camera You guys know how I am whenever it comes to playing games. I, I, I love I love playing games um, off camera um, I think I'm just more comfortable just playing games off camera because like, you know um, I don't know. I, I think it's just like a feeling thing. So uh, I, Then I'm gonna give like my, my take on like the stalker 2 game and stuff like that But we're definitely gonna like react to like cut scenes and all that um, What else and then oh bro, we got the game awards uh, bro, we got the Game Award, um, voting thing, we got that, I think, in, like, a week or two, so, um, and then we got the Game Awards, er uh, early December, hopefully we get, like, a GTA 6 trailer, uh, but listen, I'm just rambling on right now, I'm just gonna give you guys my schedule, other than that, man, again, comment down below, what do you guys think about this video, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you guys later for the next video, and peace out.